Okay, my name is Talat. Uh, I work with the Polo Alta Networks. Uh, most of the consumers, we don't have any consumer products. Maybe you don't know the company, but basically it's a firewall company and provide the cybersecurity uh, features for the, their customers. And I, I started using the Beam 2019, and since that, that time, we are using Dataflow. I just want to give a little bit idea what we are doing uh, Cor Cortex Data Lake and what is that. Basically, we are the data lake for the cybersecurity applications and company and other companies' products also too. They, they have the firewalls, some sort of the software firewalls, some of them is the physical firewalls and other devices. They send the data, all of the security events to a central point that here. And this is my team. And on top of the, this data lake, the companies built uh, several products to secure to networks, such as IoT products or uh, threat prevention products or the extent, ext extended response kind of products if you have an attack and take the actions on the firewall. Some numbers, how big our product is, is around, we have the more than 10 regions uh, deployment. Also, for one region, we process more than 10 million records per second, and a total, maybe we, we reach more than 100 million records per second. And we store the, at a given time, we store the 100 petabytes and more data on our data lake. And these are just, you know, the general idea, what is, what, we, what size we have. But also on the streaming side, we serve more than 10 different applications and those applications has for one reason, you know, the actually I write the 10,000, more than 10,000 jobs. But last night I checked that just one region we have the 10,000 jobs. Most probably we have lots of jobs and all of them is the streaming jobs. And usually on the streaming side, we have different capabilities, use cases like transformation, format change, or aggregation, real-time analytics, so on. And you may ask that, you know, the why I explained those things, because I want to take you guys to design the, this data lake from scratch, then you can understand how we design it and what, what we are using that. You now, you gather the kind of requirement, you know, the, this is the data lake, the requirements, and we need to build using the Apache Beam and data flow. Basically, the whole idea is that you have so many producers, those producers somehow needs to inject the data on Kafka, we use Kafka, and read from Kafka for given applications and those applications has to be write somewhere else or deliver to those, those messages. How we will just go to process the data? You know, the initial thought in the company, we already write the data on Kafka, then the internal applications can read from the Kafka. And, you know, the, they, we thought that, okay, there's a data flow and everyone can use it. It's easy, easy to use, and they can write their code. Then we end up with the Kafka cluster outage because not all of the people is write in the very efficient code or may not be aware of what they are writing. Then we decide that we need to provide on top of the data flow of MBeam, we need to provide some kind of streaming infrastructure, which is an internal infrastructure for company and whoever needs the, a streaming job, they can describe somehow, then they can start their job without writing code. This is our streaming infrastructure. In here, you will see that there's a one application. This application means the company's internal customers. For us, it's customer, but it's not real customer, just another team building the application. They sent their request to our API server. 
and we build that this yellow ones is we build it and these uh, purple ones are they are not they are not this purple but they are, the purple ones is the another team is built it and these are data flow and Kafka and so on. They sent the request to us, then our API server is create a deployment request on the data store, then queue, then deployer is deployed. Deployer take the request, generate the necessary data flow job or beam job, beam pipeline, and deploy it. This two step is working together closely, and eventually we end up with the data flow job. Okay, I need to give a little bit information about how we store the data on the Kafka site. You know, first of all, we we thought that the Kafka Kafka should not be accessible directly or do the, any modification the manual because then you cannot track the Kafka what happens for your partition or other things. That's why we introduce a metadata service which responsible for any Kafka modification, topic change or topic topic creation, no one is accessed to Kafka directly uh, except the metadata service and Kafka DevOps team, by the way. This help us to know what is going on with the Kafka. And for Kafka side, we have multi-tenancy for each cluster. And this is one cluster, this is another cluster. And this one is the one topic, like tenant one, tenant two, tenant X, tenant Y. Okay, how the application is described to their use cases, business model, because those applications is not trivial applications. Security applications, they need to describe something else. We came up with the, uh, as I showed you, there, there's the API server and basically we communicate through the rest, but the payload is very simple. You know, thank you Beam for that, because when the, these ideas came to, in our mind, then we thought that, okay, what we can do that, you know, the, we can let the customers is run the their code, but it is it will not be different than the previous approach, right? Because if they start running the their code, then it it means they can also break the something else. And the SQL Beam SQL abstraction is 2019, I believe, the day they introduced that, and we immediately start using that. The idea is that they just tell the which table table means in in this term you know, the, which topic they want to read, but they don't need to give the topic information because we know that topics and all of the Kafka server information on the metadata service. And because of that, they just need to say tenant ID or tenant name. And the rest of the thing is they describe as a SQL. If it is simple transform, as you mentioned, uh, as you can imagine that like filtering, projection, it's very easy. It's already supported on the beam side. And they just say what kind of output they want to reach, uh, they want to get, and what is the thing. And uh, they also give the application name. Then based on the, this information, we generate a DAG. And this DAG is showed, uh, uh, the, they, they use the that, that DAG directly. We deploy that and data flow is running. Today, as I mentioned that we use the data flow and DAG is generated ba based on the REST pipeline. And we support so many output formats, our JSON, CSV, some security related format like Ceph, Leaf, kind of. And we, Beam has variety of the things, but we implement our own things because, because some of the, I can say in that way, Beam thing is try to achieve very generic and abstract way but sometimes very generic abstract way is not working for us. That's why we implement our own things for, for that. And on top of the, these basic feature, features, we also implement some additional services like such as self-filling and cost optimizer. I will mention that rest of the talk. Okay, DAC is looks like this. You know, the, this is Kafkaio, and we know that they give the tenant IDs, then we, we put the un, uh, we, we put the necessary parameters on the Kafka and put on the DAG. Then the rest of the thing is just you know the appending the, oh, the, rest, the other things like this is 
Yesterday I, I talk about that. Today's any coder doesn't support the schema evolution. This is another issue on the beam side. Then that's why we decided to go with this, our own Pardus to deserialize and serialize the, our, our pipes. In here, we read the, all of the data as an Auro. That's why there's the Auro binary to row serialization happens. Right after that, this yellow ones is provided by the beam, by the way. And we feed the SQL transform and give the business logic SQL in here, and the beam is generated the deck, uh, important deck, business business logic in here. Then output of that, we we receive the row and change the set, the row to output format, whatever output format is desired. My example, it was the JSON, then which means that we turn to the row beam row to JSON in this step. Then we create, you know, the very simple things, batch creator. You can get the idea, right? The, for anything, you don't want to write one element at a time. You want to do some kind of batching, and the, this is described on the rest endpoint, and we just do that batch, that batching side. And the thing means that I mentioned that. Definitely, this is you know. Though I explain the core core streaming infrastructure when we implement it. Don't think like that, you know, the, at least it wasn't happen to us. We will go to scale immediately. First, we start with the one job, then 100 jobs, then 1,000 jobs. Now, you know, the, I stop counting how many jobs we have it. That's why and this getting gradually. And what I learned that, you know, the, we had the, some operational challenges while scaling. First challenge. This is more related with the runner, you know, though it's not directly the beam. Basically, we use the data flow. Data flow support update function. You can use dash dash update or some other parameters to update your jobs. But somehow, data flow update is not very reliable for our use case. Definitely, it is working well and it's awesome feature. I don't say that, you know, the, the update has the issue, but for our case, you know, the, we use the Kafka IO and data flow update. Uh, if you have the partition increase on the Kafka side, data flow update cannot update it because it's the split change. This is one issue. And another one is that, you know, the sometimes, I'm not sure did they fix or not. You know, the, the thing is getting slower then they cannot drain the job kind of case. They, and we implement the reliable update. The basic idea is that you try to data flow update first. If it is not working, then drain the job and get the new job. Okay, this is my last last topic. I will I want to mention that Kafka topic evolution. Everybody is mentioned about the schema evolution. I didn't see that so far. No one is mentioned that it's not just beam. You know, the in overall open source community, no one is mentioned about the topic evolution, but actually topics are also changing. Basically, when you create a topic, it may have the one log per second, then tomorrow it may have thousand log per second. Then the, your topic needs is changing. For topic change that action, Kafka IO cannot support the partition increase. At least it's it tried to support it in, in the beam side, but then beam, we realized that it's not working properly. I believe I discussed with the John. He is the engineer. He is working on on that. Yeah, here, he will fix that. <laughs> but you know, the, we are working in the, this infrastructure more than three years, and we we implement this health healing. It looks to metadata change whenever the metadata has a topic change and detect which job is affected and restart to those jobs. Another one is that traffic change. You know, the topics may have the different log rates over the time. Then we need to, we need to allocate less resources or more resources because the, all of the streaming jobs is based on the how many partitions or input split you have it, then it can scale or scale up or scale down. This is also our own auto, 
autoscaler. Auto Kafka doesn't support partition decrease. And what we did, uh, we created one Kafka checker which checks the always the partition, uh, sorry, partitions offset and dump somewhere else. Another uh, autoscaler application is look to that party, uh, offset change and based on that, it does to some prediction and take the action to the metadata. And whenever the changes happen on the metadata, then self-healing is restart to those jobs. And for partition decrease, we, we recreate a new partition. First, we start consuming the two, the two topics then after that, one of them is fade out and the other one is continued. And last thing, I believe this is a missing feature for data flow. They should support that. Basically, you know, the traffic could be getting higher. Also, could we go least the, the decrease the lower? But sometimes it may uh, hit the zero, right? And you don't want to allocate your resources when it hits the zero. And we call the cold starter. Basically, you know, the V influence from the AWS Lambda idea. If whenever we see the job is not consuming more than five, five, five minutes, then we hibernate those jobs. Whenever we see the traffic, then immediately we restart, uh, restart the job. Definitely there's a exceptions like some of the business use cases, they don't want to do that and we uh, exclude them. But most of the business use cases, they use that.